Welcome to the show called Beyond Our Galaxy. On today's show, we're going to be talking about the following three things that relate to the subject of astronomy. Binoculars. Telescopes. And the naked eye. We are now going to be taking a look at the most important parts of the Earthling's head, the human eye. Before the invention of the telescope or the binoculars, there was only one way an ancient astronomers were able to view their night sky. It was with the use of only their very own two eyes. Here are some uh, Babylonian astronomers who are looking up at the night sky to see what they can see. Here is a simple picture of the human eye and its different parts. Perhaps one of the most important part of the human eye is seen in the middle of this diagram called the pupil. When an earthling goes outside at night in the dark, it takes a few minutes to adjust itself to the night nice sky view. Once our eyes readjust to the night sky view, Earthlings can enjoy searching the night sky. We are now going to be taking a, a look at three ancient cultures that could only use their eyes to observe the night sky. These three different kinds of cultures are ancient Mesopotamians, ancient Babylons, the Chinese. The ancient Mesopotamians were both astronomers and astrologers. As seen here in this picture, the astronomers are giving the king his reading in astrology. As one can only imagine, the astronomer or astrologer needed to be very careful giving the king a good reading. Here is a map of where the ancient Mesopotamian empires were located. Here is what is called a cuneiform tablet. Ancient astronomers, astrologers, would write or scribe on this tablet the things they had seen in the night sky, or what would possibly happen in the future. Alongside the Mesopotamian astronomers were people called the Babylonians. These ancient Babylonians existed from 2350 BC to 1787 BC. Here is a map of ancient Babylon seen here in this picture. Once again, the Babylonian Empire existed from 2350 BC to 177 BC. The Babylonians also studied both astronomy and astrology as well. The Babylonians were known as a lion because they conquered and devoured many nations. Here is a picture of two Babylonian astronomers exploring the night sky with their eyes and writing things down as what they see. Note that the one who is not writing is using a special kind of astronomy tool called a sextant. Here is a picture of a modern-day sailor using a sextant to help guide them through the seas. The same sailor could use the sextant upon the celestial bodies at night to help them guide them to their next port. Despite the fact that ancient astronomers did not have binoculars or telescopes to use, they did have some amazing tools like this to help them explore the universe with. Our third group of people we will now briefly talk about who were only were able to see their eyes to guide them are the Chinese. In this account, we find the wise men coming from the Far East. The account can be found in the Holy Bible and the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2. The wise men are presumed to have come from China and were astrologers watching the for the sign of the birth of Jesus Christ. What guided these wise men to where Jesus Christ was born? It is called the Star of Bethlehem. No one really knows for sure what this star was, but the point is it helped to guide them by just using their own eyes and nothing else. Indeed, the naked eye can see a lot. When we earthlings look up in the night sky full of stars and everything else that can be seen. In fact, the human eye can see about 3,000 stars at one time when looking up into space. One of the most modern-day astronomical tools that was invented for astronomers to use is called 
a planisphere. The next picture shows what one looks like. A planisphere, a two-piece disc to be used when outside at night. Point the disc up towards the night sky using a red flashlight while looking for what you want to find. Scroll for the date and time for the object you are looking for. Here are some more fascinating ancient astronomer tools that ancient astronomers invented and used. The next few pictures will show you what these interesting objects are. Here is a compass created by an 11th century Muslim scholar. The compass could guide you to what direction you wanted to find. The directions are north, south, east, west. Here is an armillary sphere. This ancient tool was used for taking measurements of the night sky. And finally in the next picture is one of the seven wonders of the world. The Great Pyramids of Egypt. It is believed that the Great Pyramids built by the Egyptians were built using the stars as their guide. In the next several pictures, there are constellations displayed on the screen. See if you can uh, identify them with just your old very eyes. And then the next picture after that will show you what it is. The Orion Constellation. Here is the diagram of the Orion the Hunter seen here in this picture. Orion has his bow and arrow ready to shoot at his prey. Can you find a horse head nebula in this picture? Here in this picture, the horse head nebula can be found squared off. Note the horse head nebula is shaped like the head of a horse. Find the booties constellation here in this picture. Here's a diagram of what the booties constellation looks like. Find the Gemini trends in this picture here. Here is a diagram picture of what the Gemini trends look like. See if you can at last find a Big Dipper in this picture. Here is the diagram of what the Big Dipper looks like. The stars called W and Merrick, as seen here, point towards the North Pole star of the Little Dipper. Well, how do you think you, you, you did on this eye-opening test? Don't feel too bad if you didn't get them all right, because it takes simply just time and practice to find your way around the universe. We now will take a look at the next important tool that a astronomer uses, the binoculars. Binoculars are a pair of identical or mirror symmetrical telescopes that are set in place side-by-side -side situation. The mirrors and symmetrical scopes are looked through by using both eyes. Here is an astronomer who has a pair of big binoculars placed on top of his mount. Binoculars are just as much fun to use as the telescopes are. These two of the astronomers are also called one binoculars, two field glasses, three binocular telescopes. Here's what a binocular telescope looks like here in this picture. Here's a pair of field glasses and what they look like. Here's a picture of regular binoculars and what they look like. When and who invented the binoculars? German-Dutch inventor Hans Lippershey who lived from 1570 to 1619, as seen here in this picture, is credited with inventing not only the binoculars, but the telescope as well. On December 6, 1608, Lippershire created the quartz crystal optics that could be placed in the binoculars for one to view faraway objects. Here is a simple diagram of what a pair of binoculars are made up of. The three most popular sizes of binoculars used are 1 7 by 35, 2 7 by 50, 3 10 by 50. Remember, the human eye alone can see up to 3,000 stars at once, but 
A 7x35 pair of binoculars as seen here in this picture can see up to 100,000 stars at one time. Here's a picture of a 7x50 pair of binoculars. Here's a picture of a 10x50 pair of binoculars that some astronomers use as well. There are at least four things that Earthlings should consider when buying a pair of binoculars, which are 1. Optical quality 2. Apparent field of view 3. Lack of distortion for the flatness of the field of focus. And the most important question of all to ask is this. Are you comfortable with it? Our next question is this. What do those two numbers mean when talking about the size of a binocular? A 7x35 pair of binoculars. The first number being 7 represents the magnification of the binocular. The second number being 35 represents the aperture of the binocular. The definition of magnification is the enlarging of an object only in appearance. The definition of aperture is an opening through a hole in which light travels. There are many different kinds of earthlings who use the binoculars. Here are just a few of those different kind of earthlings seen in the next few pictures. The everyday average amateur astronomer is seen here in this picture. The military, like this Russian soldier who viewed what was happening to Leningrad from a distance. Bird watchers, like this one who likes the birds up close and from a distance as well. Indeed, both the naked eye and the binoculars can see fascinating objects in the night sky. But now we're going to be taking a look at one more interesting astronomer's tool called the telescope. There are basically two different kinds of telescopes that astronomers use today when looking up into the night sky. One, the refractor. Two, the reflector. Right now, here is a pop quiz to see if you know who really invented the telescope. Was it A, Zacharias Jensen, B, Galileo Galilei, C, Edward Hubble, or D, Hans Lippershard? Well, the answer is D, Hans Lippershard. Astronomer Hans Lippershard, German-Dutch astronomer from 1570 to 1619. This astronomer not only created the binoculars, but believe it or not, he also created a telescope as well. Here's astronomer Lippershard working on inventing the telescope in 1608 at the same time he works on inventing the binoculars. Believe it or not, it is astronomer Lippershay who creates the telescope and not some others who seem to take the credit. Oh shoot, I almost got away with it. So gal, you would have been trying to steal my ideas from me, would you? Why shoot no, Hans, what gave you that idea? Power, money, prestige, just to name a few of them, gal. Not me, Hans. The Catholic Church won't let me have it. You ever thought about becoming a Protestant, gal? Shoot, Hans, I think we need to drop the subject here. Why should we drop this hot subject, gal? They might burn me at the stake, and I would rather be under house arrest instead, Hans. I completely understand your predicament, gal. Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei was close second to inventing the telescope as well. In 1608, the spy glasses, or better known as binoculars, were becoming very popular to use and to own. Here is a picture of Galileo Galilei along with his telescope being on display. Here is a picture of Galileo's telescope. It was made up of a hollow cylinder with concave lenses and the eyepiece was concave as well. With power magnification of 30, Galileo would enjoy seeing the solar system very much. The next picture will show us what Galileo's first subject matter he saw. Galileo was indeed the first astronomer to view the four largest moons of planet Jupiter seen here in this picture. Io, Europa, 
Ganymede, and Callisto. Today, in the 21st century, a father and a son could spend literally hours exploring the night sky with a good telescope as seen here in this picture. Here is a diagram picture alongside of a refracting telescope and what it looks like on the inside of it. Light travels into the telescope and down through the tube and into the eyepiece where the viewer can enjoy the view. The next few pictures are taken from a refracting telescope. So just sit right back down in the easy chair, relax, and enjoy. If astronomer Hans Lippershe invented the refracting telescope, the next question then is this. So then, who invented the reflecting telescope? British astronomer Isaac Newton, 1643 to 1727. It is astronomer Isaac Newton who invented the reflecting telescope in 1668. He used a concave mirror that reflected the light up to a flat diagonal mirror and then into an eyepiece. Here is a picture of Isaac Newton's telescope. Isn't it amazing what our forefathers were able to do with the limited kind of technology they had back in the early days of astronomy? Here is a diagram of what the reflector telescope looks, looks like on the inside of it. Light travels parallel to the telescope down to the primary mirror. Light then bounces off the primary mirror and travels back up to the eyepiece where, it, where the viewer can see the object. Here in the next few pictures are pictures of space taken with a reflecting telescope. So just sit right back in your easy chair, relax, and enjoy. Indeed, the universe holds a lot of beauty to see and explore, whether you do it with your eye, a pair of binoculars, or a good telescope. Exploring the universe can be an enjoyable lifetime experience. Just remember the following things about telescopes. A refractor telescope is a type of optical telescope using a lens as its objective. A refractor telescope is also known as a Dioptic telescope. A reflector telescope is also considered to be an optical telescope as well. Reflector telescopes uses a number of single or curved mirrors to help reflect light that will help form an image. Indeed, telescopes are fascinating to view our universe with, and there are some really cool kind of telescopes in use today to do some special observing with. So just sit right back down in the easy chair, relax, and enjoy the next few pictures about telescopes. Radio telescopes, very large radio telescopes, Zucaro, New Mexico. Big Bear Solar Observatory, infrared telescope, Big Bear, California. The European XMM Newton X-ray Telescope, location, low Earth orbit. Veritas Gamma Ray Telescopes, West Lafayette, Indiana. And finally, the last one is Hubble Space Telescope, a robotic type telescope, location, low Earth orbit. Hey, gal. Wasn't those telescopes pretty cool? Yeah, I suppose so, Isaac. But I have a question for you. 
Go ahead, gal. Fire away, man. Were you trying to infringe on our adventures just to make a little more money? Why, gal, I'm shocked with you in that question. I knew it, gal. I just knew Isaac is trying to steal our ideas from us. Hey, gal, who's this guy that just butted in on our conversation here? I'm Hans Lippersher, the one who invented both of the binoculars and the telescope. Why, fruity tootie to you, Hans. I'm Isaac, and I discovered gravity. We all know that, Isaac. But were you trying to infringe on our ideas or not? Why, shoot, no, gal. I was just trying to improve on the idea. Besides, Her Majesty's the Queen would allow me, and my British government would tax me to death. Well, Hans, I guess Isaac wasn't so greedy after all. I suppose so, gal. I suppose so. Hey, Gal, I have just one more question for you. What's that, Isaac? Have you joined a Protestant church yet? Beyond, Beyond our, our galaxy. galaxy.